Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the tokenomics design playlist. Today, we're talking about part three, step three of our seven step tokenomics design process, lifecycle patterns. As a brief reminder, this content is for educational purposes only. It is not legal, financial, technical, or investment advice. And as we saw, this is part of our seven step process. We're now talking about life cycle patterns. So if you're diving in here, you'll want to go back a couple of videos to the start of this process. Each video details one of these steps in our process. And as we've seen, each of these videos follows one of these worksheets in the tokenomics design canvas. So we're following along this, this process, this canvas to designing our tokens. Before we dive into life cycle patterns, let's, let's talk about them from an over, overview. Largely, we want to answer four different pieces. There's four different steps of the life cycle of, of a token. There's the token creation, there's the token transfers, token usage, and token destruction. So token creation, right? There's actually quite a number of ways that tokens are generally or generally can be created. They could be emissions following a time-based schedule. Uh, for example, Bitcoin was the first example of this, right? So Bit Bitcoin is emitted, is created every single block that is mined. So, uh, and a block occurs roughly on average every 10 minutes. So it's basically this constant per time or constant per block emission. You could also have metric-based emissions though. So um, uh, tokens that are emitted when the protocol hits a certain amount of you know, revenue or TVL or um, some kind of um, usage-based metric, so kind of performance-based emissions. You could have pre-mined distributions, as many projects have done. Uh, you can have tokens, in certain cases, minted by users. For example, uh, users of MakerDAO, when they, they deposit collateral to mint the stablecoin DAI, right? So you have tokens that are minted by users. You could have tokens minted by pro the protocol itself. So it's important to just clarify where are these sources of token creation uh, coming from and what are those. Similarly, we'll look at token transfer. Can the token be transferred or not? Because not every token necessarily should be, be able to be transferred. Token usage, the utilities, the use cases, right? What are your users using it for on a daily basis, day-to-day -day basis? And then finally, token destruction. Now, not all tokens will necessarily be destroyed or have an option to be destroyed, but things like token burns or even expiration dates um, are, are relevant and you'll see common, common uh, dynamics that you'll see in tokenomics. And it's crucial to account for all these faucets, right? Sources of, of supply and sinks, um, uh, sources of uh, or, or reducing supply, all these faucets and sinks for your token. And so we have our lifecycle patterns worksheet here. We're continuing in our curve CRV token example. And the first thing we want to answer is how is the token created? Well, in Curve's case, CRV is emitted to liquidity providers, right? It's emitted um, a, a constant schedule. There's a predetermined schedule. The rate of it does decline over time, but it's, it's a predetermined per unit of time schedule. And in terms of where those CVR tokens are emitted, you actually stake CVR in order to vote on where those emissions are directed. So it's emitted to liquidity providers. There's a pre-known schedule for the total amount that's emitted, but then where the uh, emissions in a given period of time are directed are up is up to a governance vote. So that so we've answered the sources of token creation. Is the token transferable? In this case, in CRV, yes, the token can be transferred unless it is staked as vote escrowed VE CRV. Now, you might be thinking, well, isn't the whole point of crypto that the token is tradable, transferable? Not really, right? Not all tokens should be tradable, for example. Um, you have reputation tokens or social status tokens where if you make them tradable, you actually undermine the very value of the token in the first place. Uh, because if reputation is just purchasable, if I can just buy reputation, uh, then, then it kind of undermines the whole social signal value to the community of that token. A good example, a very common example that everyone could probably relate to uh, not explicitly a token, but in but in Twitter, right? Twitter recently made made it possible to buy a blue check mark. 
basically buy social status or buy reputation. And as you saw, that led to a bunch of imitation problems, a bunch of uh, a, a lack of, um, you know, a bunch of imitation problems, a bunch of lack of a, a user or ad revenue dropping off. And so it can cause a lot of problems and rub the community the wrong way if you make social status purchasable. Moving on to how is the token used? Well, in CRV's case, you can stake it as VECRV in order to vote on how emission rewards are distributed and earn a share of protocol fees. And then also it's interesting, you should think about unexpected ways in which case your token in, in which your token might be used. So for example, in CRV's case, an unexpected or unanticipated way that the token was used is that large pools of CRV holders uh, formed because. If you have more CRV, you have more voting power, so you have more control over where the rewards are directed. And what you had was these entire protocols, right? Convex is an entire protocol with its own entire token that evolved as a large holder of CRV tokens. So you want to be thinking about not only the intended ways that your token is used, but the unintended ways that your token might be used. And then finally, talking about uh, the, the last step of, of the life cycle patterns is token destruction. CRV itself is not burned by using it, right? It's not, it's not burned or destroyed. However, vote escrowed CRV expires on a linear schedule, right? So if I lock up my uh, curve for four years, I get a certain amount of, v, uh, of vote escrowed CRV and that decays linearly over time such that I have none left at the end of four years. So um, it's, the, it's always important to think about, uh, even if it doesn't seem at first like there is a way for your token to expire or be burned, you want to be thinking about these creations, sources of creation and sources of destruction, so that we can have this healthy balance uh, in, the, in the entire ecosystem. Because in Curve's case, for example, if, if vote escrow curve didn't expire, then people could just build it up cumulatively and you would get these massive imbalances in whales who are early, their, their level of control over the protocol. So that's a uh, value accrual. Next up, we'll look at incentive mechanisms, which is a really fascinating step and, uh, and, and quite uh, interesting to dive into. As a quick reminder, right? We're always going to figure out, we're always gonna remember, oh, there is some other role or something I need to tweak and go back. That's fine. If you go back a few steps, just make sure you repeat every step that you're going back to. You can find all these resources that we're talking about, including the tokenomics design canvas at these links. And I'll see you in the next video on